A city evolves. Ancient Babylon. Ancient Rome. 18th century London. Urban civilization is evolving. Finally from us today, inside the smart home of the future, which merges a dizzying array of wireless technology to produce something called ubiquitous living. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. Well, here I am at the meat counter. This is what the shop likes to call its intelligent freezer. Why do they think it's so clever? Well, all the packets of meat here contain a microchip. This is really what I mean by a transformation of the relationship between user and device. This person is not a user anymore in any real sense of the English word. They are a subject. In an everywhere world too, you see that there are many devices, systems, and services that impinge on each user and also on each other. So just by walking down the street, you could be subject to a personal biometric system. You could be scanned by the gateway of the transit system. There could be something embedded in the street or in the flooring beneath you. You could be touching other haptic interfaces, tangible interfaces in the environment around you. The lamp posts and the other features of the streetscape could have informational services appended to them. And last but not least, there is the surveillance element. There is a UAV here, a robotic helicopter, which is also surveying the cityscape and communicating with all of those devices. It may seem like a vision of a distant science fiction world, but this scenario could be just around the corner. In fact, at this very moment in South Korea, an entire city, a youth city, is being built that utilizes ubiquitous technology. It had its first test run in March of last year. Several other countries are currently planning projects modeled around this futuristic city model. An everywhere world, as Adam Greenfield calls it, is a world in which computers are embedded and merged seamlessly everywhere in the environment. Radio frequency identification tags communicate their position and other information constantly in a vast wireless network. Everyday objects become searchable as if they were part of an interconnected world wide web. In this Internet of Things, scientific management and surveillance of people and the environment we inhabit becomes possible, and marketers' ultimate dreams come true. A road diverges in the desert. Lexus. The road you're on, John Anderton, is the one less traveled. Make sure you Good evening. You can move the old fashioned John Anderton. John Anderton. You can use a Guinness right about now. As computer chips become smaller and their processing power increases exponentially, ubiquitous computing has become a practical reality. As reported by Wired News, ubiquitous systems are to be rolled out in New York City in 2009. The Architectural League of New York will commission five to seven teams to develop urban interventions to be installed in and around New York City in spring 2009 that will imagine alternative trajectories for how various mobile embedded networks and distributed forms of media, information and communication systems might inform the architecture of urban space and or influence our behavior within it. Consumer convenience is a central selling point for ubiquitous computing, particularly smart home applications of this technology. Finally from us today, inside the smart home of the future, which merges a dizzying array of wireless technology to produce something called ubiquitous living, where access to the web is available anywhere, anytime. In Seoul, South Korea, our Joe Hee Cho visited the U Home. Not too far off in the future, perhaps within several years, your home, your kitchen, your living room, your bathroom will be interactive. 
A screen in your kitchen will show a list of packages that arrived while you were out. Your refrigerator will recognize what you put in it and keep track of how much of it is left. It will even recommend recipes. If you're a bad cook, just follow instructions. The dining room table will know you as well. So this is the art of customized user recognition. The table will basically go up and down depending on my height. In the living room, the TV screen is not only a movie theater, but also a tracking system of where family members are. Take the picture frames and Xboxes away. Everything is integrated into this e-table. From games to children's books, this table can load a good-sized digital library. Choose your interior depending on the day's mood, or just add your TV onto the wall. So the secret lies in this little sticker. This is called an RFID chip. It can be put on me or on my mobile phone. And it basically recognizes my preferences. What kind of books I like to read, what kind of music I like to listen to, my whole medical history. This is basically who I am. And whether this is a good thing or not, we are at the footsteps of a whole new generation of future lifestyles. The well-established consumer base for mobile devices was discussed at the March 2008 International Conference on the Internet of Things in Zurich, Switzerland, as serving as a means of acclimating individuals to the presence and use of ubiquitous technology. Possible marketing plans were discussed to introduce self-scanning through the use of mobile devices to scan physical products in a manner similar to Internet shopping. Andreas Scheller, a senior engineer for Motorola, presented information to the Zurich Conference. The next step is to internetable physical objects, connecting people with things and even things with things. The Internet of Things will enable connectivity not just between people and their computing devices, but between actual, everyday things. By enabling connectivity for virtually any physical object that can potentially offer a message, the Internet of Things will affect every aspect of life and business in ways that used to be the realm of fantasy, or even beyond fantasy. To ensure a fast adoption rate, it is necessary to start with low-hanging fruit technologies like barcode scanning by camera, which will become a free feature for mobile devices morphing into high-end camera phones. This strategy appears to be already in action in Germany, where an entire shopping mall has been designed to allow for product scanning by cell phone. RFID tags are also being used. This is no ordinary supermarket, it's the Future Store, one of the most high-tech hypermarkets in the world. Here the Germans are busy transforming the way we do our shopping, and one of the biggest innovations of all concerns something as small as a cell phone. The idea is very simple. Most people take their mobiles with them when they go to the shops, so why not make your phone help you with your shopping? That's why the stores developed some free software that will turn your telephone into a mobile shopping assistant. Now I can use the camera on my phone to scan the barcodes of all the things I want to buy. So off we go. Some washing powder. Some mineral water. Oh. And something for the kids. Now by scanning all the barcodes myself, I'm actually saving myself a lot of time when it comes to paying for all of this. But I haven't finished my shopping yet. Let me show you some more in-store innovations over here. OK, well, here I am at the meat counter. This is what the shop likes to call its intelligent freezer. Why do they think it's so clever? Well, all the packets of meat here contain a microchip. There's one. And that means that when I take this packet out to have for my dinner, the shop knows that one packet has been taken and it knows exactly how many packets are left. And look what you can do with this chip card at the futuristic wine department. You just insert it here, and then you can treat yourself to a little automated wine tasting. Heute bietet Real vorgefertigte Mahlzeiten aus frischen Zutaten an. Überzeugen Sie sich selbst. By the way, this is uh, Roger, the hypermarket's resident robot, who sort of wanders around the place telling people about all the innovations here. OK, shopping's all done. Now it's time to pay. Now, here in the Future Store, there are some more traditional cash tills. You can probably see them behind me there. 
but because I've already scanned all my shopping into my mobile phone, I don't have to use those. All I have to do is to tell my telephone that I've finished my shopping by pressing one button. It then produces one barcode for all the items in my trolley. Now for the final step. I put the barcode into the barcode reader, like that. It tells me how much I have to pay. And there are lots of different ways of paying. You can pay with cash or credit cards, even using your fingerprint here. And coming soon, customers will even be able to use radio waves to pay with their mobile phones. So far we've seen examples of the consumer layer of ubiquitous computing, which will likely be its most emphasized aspect. On top of this layer sits the incredible surveillance capability of this technology. Video surveillance cameras are an obvious indicator that you are being watched, but the Internet of Things automated surveillance and tracking grid is merged seamlessly and invisibly throughout the entire environment. In the Internet of Things, Every object, as well as people who are wearing RFID tagged clothes or are using wireless electronic devices, will be readable by a computer or wireless network. The objects or person's details, exact location, and other information can be obtained electronically by invisible sensors and sidewalks, roads, or doorways. This convergence of the digital and physical worlds opens a doorway to a whole new kind of surveillance that may give rise to what some call a synchronic society. Dr. Kingsley Dennis, a research associate for the Center for Mobility's Research at Lancaster University, describes a synchronic society in this way. The development of increasingly sentient smart environments will go some way towards creating a more systemic relationship of interconnections and interdependencies between humans, objects, machines, and locality. Here, the emphasis is on an embedded sensory world that will influence and fundamentally alter social practices. Such a cyber nomadic landscape has been defined by three primary forces of physical digital fusion, the augmented self, and digitally catalyzed masses. Ultimately, Dennis sees this technology creating a heavily surveilled population inside a global information gridlock that will be nearly impossible to escape. Increasingly, relationships between humans, devices, environments are being merged or steered towards a new construction of social life, one that embeds the individual as a digitally rendered identity within a global information gridlock. If such an irreversible shift is made towards digitally rendered societies, this would arguably lock in a form of monitored controlled society. With such predictions of an increasingly censored and enmeshed global system, it is difficult to see how living off the net will be a choice in the near future. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. Major computer companies and corporations have foreseen the rising trend of ubiquitous computing for many years. Intel's president, Paul Ardellini, announced recently that the next four decades would be about ubiquitous computing encompassing every aspect of daily life. In a February 2000 document from Hewlett Packard's Internet and Mobile Systems Laboratory, we find that Packard wants to make people, places, and things web present. The document details the infrastructure of the Internet of Things. Our goal is a bridge between the World Wide Web and the physical world we inhabit. It also includes the ability to provide people, places, and things, electronic or otherwise, with a web resource that is used to store information about them and which is automatically correlated with their physical presence.